Good morning. I'm pleased to be here. One of the things that I wanted to start off with is to talk about one of my favorite mathematical things, which is this function that's zero everywhere and then goes up to infinity. Very disruptive, very sudden. A lot of the technology we're talking about is exactly like that. So this is disruption 2.0. Um, let's talk about some of the things that we might hear about disruptive technologies. A lot of people think, oh, it's awful. Yesterday I talked to somebody about social media and the notion of privacy, and he thought that mankind was just going to hell in a handbasket because of the lack of privacy and some of the things going on. So maybe the powers of darkness are in all this thing, stuff about cloud and social networking and social media. Um, it's only a toy. Th people just play with it. They try to get dates with it. You, don't, you really don't need a skilled operator to do it, so that's great. Uh, it helps us communicate better. It helps us be more social and cooperative, and it's also used to run a, a presidential campaign. But public officials and government has been slow to adopt, and uh, some innovative organizations have already done it. And in general, one of our big issues are records management security, and the news gathering industries have been severely impacted by this. So what is this technology you want to know? It is the telephone. It is the telephone. And isn't it interesting that we're having the same conversation again about a technology, the same issues, the same challenges, and yet some kind of way we've forgotten about it. So it was all of a sudden all the rage and now it's the thing to do. So I'm going to talk really briefly about, go through a, a kind of a tour of the technologies, what they are, how NASA has used some of this and some of the value proposition that organizations might have. First, what I like to do all the time when I talk about cloud, it's kind of similar to what we do in church. We kind of come together and we agree that we're, you know, doing all these things, we, our doctrine. Well, we have to agree on a definition. We, we, everybody says they do cloud, but then when you get into the details, cloud, what is cloud, what is this? So for purposes of what I'm going to talk about today, this is my, de my definition. And the key attributes of cloud computing with the definition I'm using, which is from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, shared pooled resources, broad network access, on-demand, self-service, automatic, scalable, elastic, flexible, and pay-as-you-go. The attributes, the advantages of this kind of technology is that it helps you reduce costs, you only pay for what you need, you save time, it's flexible, you can scale, grow, go back to nothing if you don't need it anymore. Using resources is very efficient, efficient, and you get high quality service at a lower cost. So for um, government, the value proposition is it gives us automatic compliance if we are able to implement things across a broad hardware platform, faster procurement, you only buy what you need, you don't have to buy, uh, invest in a whole large heavy infrastructure, you can deploy technologies faster, it helps government focus on mission and not so much into managing infrastructure, reduces duplication, um, and then helps you save money by only having what you need and not over-provisioning your infrastructure. I want to touch just lightly on one of the things that NASA is doing with cloud. We um, have a cloud instantiation that has been implemented at NASA's Ames Research Center in San Jose, California. A uh, piece of that uh, architecture is going to be extended to Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And what we believe is that this is, is going to give a lot of the uh, engineers and scientists um, who use supercomputing the opportunity to start developing their models, doing their research in an environment that's smaller and still, instead of using very expensive, high-performance resources or perhaps not having to invest in a lot of infrastructure when they're very early in the life cycle of their research and development projects. So I wanted to talk uh, really quickly in conclusion about cloud, about three aspects of it, because as I said earlier, a lot of people talk about it. So there's parts of it that's just plain bull, and there's parts of it that is not a silver bullet, but there's aspects of it that's very, very valuable. 
So not everything is well suited for the cloud. Um, and first you have to know, are you talking about cloud? Do we agree on what the definition for, for that is? Um, you've got to know what you need and what capabilities are that's going to be delivered to you. Don't let the hype fool you because a lot of times us in this industry who've been in a long time, we hear so much hype, we get kind of numb to it. But don't let the hype fool you into disinterest or uh, seduce you into thinking that you have capabilities that don't really exist. It's not a silver bullet. As I said earlier, some applications are not well suited for the cloud. You have to think about vendor lock-in. So, you know, if you go in, are you stuck? Are you, are you, are you committed to that vendor forever? And then finally, there are perceptions about security. There, some are real, some are perceived. But you have to address that so you don't have that as a barrier to entry. But the advantages of it are compelling. And it drives us to look for opportunities to take advantage of this disruptive, this disruptive technology and start to develop some solutions that are very uh, amenable to cloud architectures. Social media. We we'll talk a little bit about what NASA is doing there and some of the advantages there. I got this definition of social media from uh, a gentleman from Gardner. I thought was pretty good. Um, gives us a whole lot of capability to collaborate, to do Uber collaborations, such as the World Wiki's blogs and things like that, on a grander scale. One of the things about social media, if you could whisper something in email, if you put it in social media, it's a shout because it's so atomic. So NASA's got NASA's in Facebook, got a lot of Facebook. Um, representation. We have an internal social media site, Spacebook, that scientists, engineers, technicians use to collaborate. Blogging is done a lot by astronauts, by myself and other leaders in the organization to share information and communicate in very personal ways. It's very effective that way. And there are benefits to social media that we definitely need to consider. It provides tools for bringing people together, for strengthening networks, getting the, the whole concept of ideas, creating new brilliant ideas and getting people together to put their collective knowledge together for innovation. Help is enabled through the technology of social media. It facilitates communication. A whisper is a shout. That's you know, something to think about, but it's very, you can leverage your ability to communicate that way. Um, and it helps you find out what other people know. You don't have to go hire consultants to come in and tell you things you already know. You can just reach out through these social media abilities and find out what they are. So the case for social media is just like the, the, the case for real networking. If we are at a conference like this, we get together and we share information and we come up with solutions. Well, you get to do the same thing through Web 2.0 and social networking technologies and you do it through um, electronic means. Definitely makes you more effective and helps increase your organizational diversity and your personal effectiveness. So in conclusion, this Disruptive technology should not be ignored. If you ignore it, it's going to run you over because your customers are going to do it anyway, with you or without you. Figure out how to advise your organizations about the best way to do it. And follow sound risk-based principles. Don't be afraid of security. Don't be afraid of the height. Identify what your risks, manage them accordingly, and, and jump right into this disruptive technology and transform your organizations. Thank you.